The consequences of inequality are playing out every day in the historically black community of Soweto. The nonprofit group Phenomenal Women, which supports victims of gender-based violence, was due to open this office space nearly a year ago, but it was destroyed by vandals. Organizers say it's another side effect of high unemployment, rising drug use and crime. People struggle on a daily basis just to get by, just to put one plate of food on the table. So uh, it's joblessness, there's no job opportunities. That's where GBV plays a huge part because remember, if the woman is unemployed, the husband goes to work, he feels that uh, he's the one bringing in the money, it puts her in a very vulnerable position. Phenomenal Women has expanded its work beyond gender-based violence. This hub was intended to offer skills training and a community library and act as a base for its food drives. It's also collaborating with community agricultural programs to create jobs for youth. The idea is to break the cycle of violence and poverty with opportunities. No one gets a job. We've been applying here, but, but no one gets a job. So we decided actually let's turn into agriculture. For someone my age, the worst case scenario is someone just turning into gangsterism. Because that's the, let me just say, in, in a place like this, that's the easy way out. The issue goes back generations. The World Bank found that the country's history of racial segregation is continuing to leave black Africans economically disadvantaged. What it means is that those children that are disadvantaged from birth are never going to reach their full potential. And if they don't reach their full potential, then the country doesn't need their full potential. Better education and more equitable land ownership are among the solutions. The country already has affirmative action legislation that prioritizes hiring historically disadvantaged groups. But some experts say the policy has been abused and allowed nepotism and corruption, keeping the wealth in the hands of a few. We've seen instances of specifically black women not getting the promotion because of a quota system, which says you're allowed three black women and three black men and one white woman and one white man trying to get a rainbow brochure in every department um, is having explicit detrimental effect on, on black women. Um, I think that's just more evidence that it's, that it's crazy uh, and that we should be going by merit. Despite the challenges, he says black South Africans are increasingly among the country's wealthiest people. The World Bank says the government's taxation and wealth redistribution programs have made life better for the poorest. But the gap is widening, and with relentlessly rising unemployment rates, parents like Swartz are left wondering if their hard work would be more fruitful abroad. I can't promise my child he's going to get a job. He doesn't work. Um, he's done with school, but there's no opportunity for him. This is my own personal experience. So. I don't know what the future of South Africa looks like. But for me personally, there's no future for us. There's no future for my, for my kids. Whether it's for major improvements at home or new prospects abroad, the inequality has many South Africans wishing for a better life. Linda Giftash for VOA News, Johannesburg.